Camille's support is much more from a uh, 30,000 foot level. I, I, I just keep him, you know, from jumping off the ledge. So. That's right. Hi, my name's Alex Barnett. I'm a comic. I live here in New York City. Uh, this is my wife, Camille. We're an interracial couple. We have a son who's now six, who's biracial. I would describe my husband as a extremely intelligent person first and foremost. He's the most well-read person I know. When I started doing comedy, what I really liked was it was a chance to write your own material, but then act it out and get that sort of instant feedback. Like some of the guys in the room, in my 20s, I was 6'5". Right? <laughs> And black, right? If you've ever been on stage, you know it's, it's very addictive. It's like it's an adrenaline rush, even when it's bad. But people still can't seem to get their arms around. Like, how is this black woman with this white guy? And this, there's this complicated backstory. Like, she's an R&B singer, and I'm her agent. And... <laughs> keep up, people. Keep up. Come on, let's go. I started doing it more and more, and really, really took to it. I always thought he was funny, so, you know, it was my pleasure to support him in that endeavor. But now that he's more established, honestly, I haven't seen him perform in years. So I'm kind of ashamed to say. Um, how funny is Alex at home? Not at all. For a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> I created a platform called Multiracial Media, where we showcase the voices of the multiracial community, mostly through artistic expression, but also through news articles and, and so forth and video. The podcast, Multiracial Family Man, that one I started actually first before the website as a way of connecting to the multiracial communities uh, when I was home because I couldn't necessarily be out every night performing the way I had been before our son was born. I just started by interviewing people who were either themselves multiracial or whose work had some implication for the multiracial community. I just think it's admirable that he's so proud to be in a multiracial relationship that he extends that pride by embracing through his podcast and the website. I don't think we've experienced any negative backlash as a couple. I, I can't recall anything, really. No, nothing direct or overt, but we've definitely gotten looks and Camille had comments. Sometimes, you know, we'll, my son and I will be at the school and our son will say, Mommy, and sometimes, you know, a white person will kind of like do a double take like, Oh, you're not the babysitter. You're not the nanny. You, Oh, you're his mother. I don't think he's really fully aware of race as a social issue. I mean, I think he's clearly aware that his parents have different skin colors, and he's brought that up a couple of times. Fortunately for us, we haven't had an experience where he's been the, the target of any racism or either directly toward him or indirectly toward us. The fact that we expose him to both sides of his family really helps him to understand that He's maybe a little bit more complex than, than his friends that are just black or, or just white. I don't want him to pick. I, I want him to identify himself as biracial. I do care. I want him to be proud of everything he is. So I wouldn't want him to pick one or another because he's not proud of one part of his heritage. I am the co-creator of a cartoon strip called The Bronze Panther. And my co-creator is a really gifted artist named Andre Ramon Allen. We had this idea that we would do a comic strip about a four-year-old superhero who was biracial. There was sort of a takeoff on Black Panther and the Black Panthers. The superhero, of course, is not a, has no superpowers whatsoever. And all he has is a towel, as a cape, and a teddy bear who can talk, who's sort of his adult conscience. I wanted our son to have something he could look up to in, in the arts and in comic strip. And I thought, well, the best way to do is we'll make him a superhero. I think it's a great portrayal of our son and a great outlet to address uh, multiracial issues with children. Uh, you know, I have a blog on my, my comedy website and what looms large in my life is that I am 50 and I have a son who's six and that's a pretty big gap. The idea was to kind of give the middle-aged dad's view of life. Hopefully somewhere in there will be some nuggets of truth or, or advice that he can utilize. Or at a minimum at least he'll see that I was very well intentioned and only wanted the best for him and that'll make him feel good. 32 years ago my classmates said I was the most likely to succeed and that was nice of them. It felt good at the time but I can tell you for most of the years since then I haven't felt very successful. I don't have that much money or any real fame or power. 
I've never owned a home or purchased a new car or created an app. And despite the fact that I'm a comedian, mommy basically thinks I'm unfunny. And of course, I get to be your daddy, which is pretty awesome. So I hope you're as successful as me in your life. Truth is, I hope you're even more successful. The success comes from doing what you love and being with the folks you love. Just succeed and the rest will take care of itself. And I'll try to do the same. Love always, Danny. I guess it would be nice for him, you know, later in life to, to go back and look at it, kind of like immortalizing your thoughts as they're happening as he's growing. Yes, so. in real time. That's yes. a nice way of putting it. Yes. Especially okay. for somebody who doesn't read my work. <laughs> well, what happens when he says, Dad, I need to choose between me and Black and White. And even if he doesn't want to choose, someone's going to make him. Right? And if somebody is me. No, he just want because we're struggling financially. Okay, so it's time for him to go to college. When that financial aid form comes, <laughs> Look, you check that box mark black. <laughs>